Hi, I'm Antonia Zinger. I'm the writer producer of The Rage Fairy, um, that's just going up at the Sherry Theater in NoHo um, with Ballview Entertainment. It's just a fabulous time. If you wanna, if you wanna hear more about this, please listen to this interview. And here we go. When did I first fall in love with theater? I think probably the first time I realized it existed. Uh, <laughs> Probably. I mean, as a child, I loved just seeing plays. I was so astonished by the fact that an entire world could be created. Um, though I will say my first theatrical experience, I actually didn't realize that I was part of a play. I was very, very little. And um, my part was to be this girl who had to rescue her brothers. And um, they didn't really tell me, they just set, told, gave me instructions for what to do. But I kind of was so in the world that I thought this was actually happening. I actually had to ask these people <laughs> like to release my brothers. Um, <laughs> so I, I like thought it was some sort of, um, I don't know, like actual task I had to do. Um, Cause I was so young that they, they, that I, I just didn't really have a firm grasp between fantasy and reality. Um, but going forward, yeah, I've just, I've always loved it. I, I love, I love uh, all the different fantasy worlds um, that, can, that can happen and being a part of them. I don't know if like sci-fi or comic book is exactly uh, the type of fantasy that I most go for. Um, the, the fantasy that you'll, you'll see in the Rage Fairy, it's very fantastical, it's very absurdist. Uh, but yeah, I think the fantasy I first read as a child um, was things like, um, well, I'm part German. So there were all these German books by Cornelia Funke, like The Dragon Rider, and um, like Inkheart, which is now like translated into English. Um, but yeah, so I kind of like those worlds where there's like sprites and fairies and like uh, really out there things can happen. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of when I fell in love with it. Um, I also am a big fan of magical realism. So that's kind of a, a place where I landed more as an adult. Um, I, I read, I like a lot of magical realism books. I kind of like the blurring of fantasy and reality, you kind of don't know which is what. Um, that's really interesting to me, especially when sort of the internal landscape of a character reflects the external landscape and those two things sort of shift back and forth and, you, and you're like, is it, is it did that actually happen? Was it in their head? Is sort of what's in their head influencing what else is going on? That's really interesting to me. Um, so I like a lot of that. I also, just like the way you can break the rules because of fantasy. That's really exciting to me. I, I like how you can talk about things um, that, yeah, are in, are, are in today's world, but in a, with kind of a different perspective or a twist, or you can exaggerate them in a way where people notice how absurd, <laughs> how absurd actual real life things are um, when, you, when you kind of get to heighten it by making someone actually, you know, be a fairy um, instead of just manic. Uh, so so it, it, just, it just allows allows a lot of possibilities for heightening, which I like. When did I first fall in love with writing? I guess I started writing when I was a kid also, and I got more serious about it in high school and college. And I think, um, so, so it's kind of became... I'd, I'd say it became an obsession after, or well, maybe in college after, um, let me think. I, I think the big part of me actually has just been how I developed my writing process, um, which is for a while I, I kind of left it. Um, and something that I realized is that I think I work best when I kind of um, don't, I'm not so much of a perfectionist I have an idea that I care about, but I also don't try to force it. So the way I do that is that I just set aside a certain amount of time to write. And as opposed to like a page count or I have to do this and I can use it however I want. And that's been really freeing for me. Um, cause, because before I, I'd be like, I need to do this. And then I would fail my deadlines and, or I wouldn't have something that I really cared about at that moment. Um, but by just making it, um, a set amount of time, there's no failing. It's kind of like a workout. You've just like, I've done it. I've did it. So I kind of get to give myself a star for the day. And that's really nice. Um, 
And also just recognizing that, hey, like the, the like ideas come and go. And um, part of that is like things like the Rage Fairy. The Rage Fairy, I wrote it in two weeks, but what went into it was so m much previous like lived life and relationships. So yeah, so sometimes, sometimes it takes a while, but then the actual writing goes fast and sometimes the writing is, takes a long time. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's, it's kind of just being patient with myself as well. I think theater is a unique medium because you have to be on the whole time. You know, you can't take a break. Um, if you mess something up, you have to keep going. It's very high stakes because it's live. Um, and yeah, so that so it's 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 very fun that way. It's like um, it's kind of like an athletic event in a way where you're just like, OK, I'm doing it and um, we're all in it. And I think that creates that excitement, too, with the audience connection, because they know that what's happening isn't like the 10th take where you finally got it right. <laughs> it's 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 like all happening right now. And I think that immediacy, that intimacy is really important and really fun. I had to write the Rage Fairy. Uh, yeah, I actually, like I said, I wrote the Rage Fairy in two weeks and I was just like in a state of anxiety at the time. Um, there was just a lot happening in my life and I was kind of making some very big decisions. Uh, so that was, that kind of like put me in this sort of heightened state. But the actual um, fairy, fairy tale, like the actual story about it, um, in a way I consider it a love letter to a friend of mine. Um, who, uh, who, is all, who, had, who had some of the issues that the Rage Fairy has. Um, but yeah, so, the, so, that, so that kind of fueled it. Um, and I think a lot of what the Rage fairy, about, fairy is about is very relatable, even though she is this manic fairy, um, which is just like attachment expectations. Uh, I think everybody knows the Rage Fairy a little bit, like <laughs> or they know someone who is like the Rage Fairy or they've been the Rage Fairy. So I think part of it was that was was just that, oh, like this is really real. Um, like what had happened, like the emotions that had went into it is like something where it was a very deeply felt relationship. And I think the the idea, so it it just it kind of the relationship cracked apart. And then I kind of put all like the love and like the the time I'd spent with this person into the play. And I was able to do it very quickly because I was in this, like I said, emotionally heightened state. Um, yeah. So the Rage Fairy is about uh, a manic fairy with a chaotic attachment style who falls in love with a murderer. And she subsequently gets haunted by a cadre of murdered girls and she just continues trying to pretend that all is well with her dream man, um, even as it becomes increasingly obvious that, uh, that he's quite dangerous and that he's creating a lot of chaos in her life. So that, that is, that is what it, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's about, it's about attachment, it's about codependency, it's about the lies we tell ourselves um, and, what happened and like control a lot of the plays about control and wanting desperately to be able to control the reactions of other people to get love to get validation um and and that's a big theme i think another big theme is just femininity and masculinity uh and, and sort of you'll you'll notice a lot of toxic a lot of toxic relationships happen in this play and I think that the, despite the fact that this world is so out there, I think people will be able to recognize the patterns of those toxic relationships um, very well. The, the production team is awesome, which is that my producer, David Dickens, um, his, it's, like his, it's basically his production company, which is Ballview Entertainment. And he's done a lot of really exciting stuff with, um, with this already. So he actually manages the Sherry Theater and the Brick House and uh, the Whitmore Lindley. And so with that, he's been putting up a lot of original plays. Um, before that, he, uh, he put up a lot of plays at Zombie Joe's Underground. And so he has experience there. And this is his first year being in charge of these theaters. So 
Um, he actually is my boyfriend. So, <laughs> so I was, so, uh, so that's, that's been a very exciting to see him grow as an artist there. Um, but the main thing with putting the team together is that um, we, this is basically a fledgling theater company and we're, he's been, we're moving from the zombie Joe's model, which is awesome. Um, but like, but like all it, all with zombie Joe and with, no with you know no set and stuff like that and we're kind of moving into these these theaters we're putting up sets and lights and things like that um so yeah with putting the team together it's mostly been him and me and then we've got trevor who's who's doing who's doing the sound and isaac who plays the murderer actually helped build the set and uh so it's it's been very hands-on i've never had so much responsibility in my entire life <laughs> but it's been great and it's been cool to pull it off um frida did the artwork we we all know these people we know a lot of these people from zombie joes um and the rest auditioned um holly who's the rage fairy uh was in turkey's the musical at zombie joes and that's kind of where where we noticed her as she she was phenomenal in that and this play wouldn't work without a really really strong lead as the rage fairy and so we knew she could bring it and that was really exciting um yeah and isaac uh isaac is yeah isaac auditioned to be the murderer and uh <laughs> all the other all the other actors were doing very um very sort of American psycho, very straight plays on the murderer. And he came in and he did something completely different that surprised us. So we had to cast him. And I won't, I won't give away exactly what he does, but it was, it's what he brought. He brought just like this, this different flavor, this almost like this like weird charm, but also danger to the character um, that really worked. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, so yeah, that's kind of how the team came together. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's how we all came together. It's been very hands-on. It's been very much um, about, about, uh, about basically doing everything. And it's, it looks beautiful, so I'm really proud. And I wanted to direct the play, well, because I wrote it, so I feel like it's my story. Um, I, I just... So I, I know what I wanted it. I knew what I wanted it to look like. And I knew that it would be my responsibility to, to make that happen. Um, I actually would feel very strange if someone else directed anything I wrote uh, because they, they might do a brilliant job, but especially the first iteration of anything, it's, kind of, it's like, that's my vision. And the vision isn't done on the page. And I, ha I have... And I had, and I have a very specific vision for the Rage Fairy. And in order to communicate that vision, I wanted to take it all the way to the end. Um, Cause words on a page are, are just kind of the blueprint. And I wanted to see, I wanted to take it to the point where it was fully realized. Uh, Cause it's, it feels incomplete otherwise. You know, like a script is incomplete without everything else added. So I, I believe that directing it is my way of completing my story. It, otherwise it kind of feels like a writer, just like having someone else write the epilogue um, or like <laughs> finish, finish their book. I mean, I want them to laugh. I want them to cry. I, I want them to feel very uncomfortable. I, yeah, what, to, what I want the audience to get out of it is just to sort of have a really good time, but then also sort of recognize these, as I said, toxic relationships, these sort of impulses within us that are very self-defeating, um, that create a lot of pain. Um, and just to be uncomfortable with how often this sort of dynamic does happen. Um, and to, but mainly to have a really good time. This play is really funny. Um, the actors are phenomenal. There's a lot of laughs. Uh, so, so that is, that's very, that's the main thing that's really important as well. It's a dark comedy. Definitely. That, that is, it's an absurdist dark comedy. That would be the, the genre. Um, so yeah, the play is an absurdist dark comedy. It's really funny. It's often uncomfortable in a good way.
the viewers should attend because the production's fantastic. Like it's so good. Um, like I, I have such a good time. I get, I kind of hide and listen to the show um, while, while it's happening. And it is like, we had opening night, everyone was laughing all the time, but also, yeah, it's just really real performances that are grounded as well as hilarious. And I also think there's just nothing, nothing like this show. Um, it is, it's really different and it's out there in a fun way. And I think it will really surprise audiences. Um, I, someone, you know, someone asked me if I, if like I was on LSD when I wrote it and I was not, um, but it's kind of that sort of fever dream. My brother described it as, uh, like driving, driving in a convertible at top speed for two hours. Well, not two hours, but like just really fast. And then that feeling of like, when it's done, like getting out of it and he's like, oh my God, well, like what even happened? Like, I feel concussed, but like in a good way. Um, so I think, I think it's just a completely new experience and I think it will knock people off their feet, give them a good time, definitely see it. I first heard of Ballview Entertainment from David, um, who is the producer. And um, I kind of knew it was gonna happen before it happened because he was planning this and planning this takeover once he got all these different, you know, when he got the, started managing these different theaters. Um, and he said, he likes to think of the word ball view entertainment, like you're like at a ball, like fancy. Um, I can picture many different things like a disco ball being trapped in one of those ball pits. I think it really, <laughs> I think the name ball view entertainment, uh, gets at some of the absurdism, which is a main part of the theater company. And a reason why I knew this play would fit well with it, which is that it does a lot of magical realism, a lot of absurdism um a lot of things that you wouldn't see elsewhere like they they did um they've done 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 straight plays like mine but they've also done sort of immersive experiences um they had they had they had they in in the time this company has existed they did a show called creepy island that sold out then they did this um halloween hallway experience show and then they did this Thanksgiving rally show where actually, which was also an immersive show where you were like led around and had to attend these different Thanksgiving dinners, very absurd, like aliens, George Washington, things like that. So I knew that it would match my love of absurdism, my love of magical realism. And, and that was really exciting to me as well. Why, well, why people should get involved with Ballview Entertainment. It's like I said, it's wonderful. Also the people, um, the people working with Ballview Entertainment are just really hardworking, very talented, um, really love what they do, and also are just very much about actually making things happen. Um, you know, actually getting the show up, actually getting the audience in there, um, doing everything that's necessary. It's very difficult to make theater in Los Angeles. Um, and a lot of people say they're gonna put up a show and don't do it. And, and they put up shows all the time. Like, like it's very consistent, which is awesome. So you'll know like your show will get made and it will look really good, um, which I think is great. And then otherwise, I think the reason people should get involved with Ballview Entertainment is just the clarity of the vision. Um, which is just, it has such a unique flavor and it has some, it has a unique brand. Um, so I think that should, if, if your play, if like the work you want to do is absurd, is absurd um, or involves absurdism or is whimsical and is, and it is kind of different from your standard, you know, dinner, dinner table drama um, which like I, I can appreciate as well. Um, it, 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 then you should definitely do this because, because the brand is so strong and the vision is so strong and that creates um, audience expectation too, where the people coming are coming because they are expecting a certain type of show. And, um, and if you can deliver that type of show, then this would be a wonderful place uh, to make your artistic home. Yeah, supporting um, Ballview Entertainment, coming to small to like black box theater shows like this is really important because I think it revitalizes, it vitalizes and revitalizes the community. It brings people together. Um, it's this is like an important part of NoHo, which is like it's called the NoHo Arts District, and so it better be full of art. 
I think I think uh, attending attending shows, supporting local artists creates a community that's exciting um, where you feel where it also creates possibilities within people. You know, it, it's like, OK, if they can put it up and do this, then maybe I can do something, too. But also, if you are just an audience member and like an, a non artist, like and it, it creates the sense of love for the community you're like oh this is my community this is my home these are my streets and like I know it because I attend shows here and I and the people making the shows are live here and I think it creates this strong love of place which I think is really important and often missing um, in in our society which is that often society is really large really impersonal it it feels like you're the things you consume are really far removed from the people making it. And when that's not the case, like it, it creates like this magical connection where it's like, oh, wow, like <laughs> this is like, this is life. So something interesting is that when I'm not a playwright or an actor or a producer is that I'm actually a therapist. So I'm about to graduate from Pepperdine um, and will then be pursuing my MFT which uh, licensure, which is marriage and family therapy. Um, so, and it's very, it's very relevant to this play actually, because there's a lot about attachment, a lot about personality disorders, a lot about mental health. Um, so a lot of what I write and a lot of what I'm interested in is the human psyche and sort of what happens when, when mental health gets disrupted, when toxic relationships happen, uh, sort of faulty thinking patterns, things like that. So that I'd say is a big influence on me as a writer, um, which my, you know, my love of therapy and um, you'll, 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 you'll see how it, how relevant it is when you, when you watch the play. But uh, when I sent it to my publicist, she was like, oh, I can completely see why you're, that you're a therapist. That makes so much sense. So mainly just like, again, I want to stress like how fantastic the performances are. Um, like everyone is killing it. Um, like I said, it's a huge marathon for Holly, like Isaac and very dangerous as the murderer, but also hilarious. Um, I think there's a lot of just fun moments where it, it's like, yeah, if please come. It's like unlike anything you've probably ever seen. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's what I'd say. Um, hi, I'm Antonia Zinger. I'm the writer producer of The Rage Fairy um, with Ballview Entertainment. Come out to NoHo to see what happens when a manic fairy falls in love with a murderer. Um, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll witness the entire destruction of reality as you know it, um, and you'll maybe be a little creeped out by how relatable it is. Um, looking forward to seeing you there.